as you'll see in the creatures we're going to show you in today's video, nature may be weird, or in fact, downright bizarre at times. Let's get right into it. A fiddler crab may first appear to be having some sort of issue. You know, an animal species with different sized claws simply cannot live. Most likely, it'll tilt and fall on its side for a while and eventually die. I mean, how exactly can you maneuver a claw like that? But, owing to nature, fiddler crabs acquired this trait, and now they must find a way to utilize their enormous claws, perhaps for thermoregulation. Which means with a larger claw, they may spend more time on the surface because it can absorb more heat. More time on the surface means more food. More food equals more mates to choose from. And not just that, this claw certainly comes in handy when men are fighting. Additionally, if a male loses his enormous claw, a smaller claw begins to form, and the lost claw develops back into a little one. To be quite honest, I have no idea how many of these cycles the crab can experience, but I have a feeling that it may be a lot. Like many other animals, fiddler crabs are constantly growing and never stop. These species are, to put it briefly, highly skilled arm wrestlers. Well, you can imagine how these crabs might appear in our environment. And naturally, the claw is used to draw females. Females who incidentally have regular claws choose guys with huge claws and good claw swinging skills. However, this movement is not accidental. It conveys a very clear message. It roughly translates to, come here and I'll dig a large hole for us and our kids and we'll find the mud flats with thousands of fiddler crabs. Well, that's an irresistible offer right there. What truly comes to mind when you hear the word crustacean? Most likely a submerged aquatic organism. Maybe the coconut crab was once exactly like his brother crabs before nature changed him. Some scientists think that giant crustaceans called coconut crabs developed extraordinary lungs because they were so eager to stay on land. Well, when you breathe with gills, you can't spend a lot of time on land, so they had to improvise and trade their gills for lungs, apparently. Which means they now have a new problem. Coconut crabs are unable to swim. If left in the water for more than an hour, they just drown. Doesn't seem like a big issue, right? Does it? All they have to do is not enter or stay more than an hour in the water and the issue is resolved, right? Well, it's not so simple. Female coconut crabs must travel to the sea if they have fertilized eggs. In order to finally release their eggs into the ocean, they continuously crawl over the rocks while being at risk of being carried away by a powerful wave. From there, larvae hatch, develop, emerge onto land, and become coconut crabs. Nature has to devise a solution since females risk their lives to protect their young. The coconut crabs gained extremely strong claws in this way. Given that the crabs themselves weigh just roughly 9 pounds, they can move things weighing up to 60 pounds. Additionally, the force generated by the claws is 4 to 5 times greater than that of a human jaw. You can climb any place you want with claws like those. The lizard in question is an Aspetachelus uniparens. It's also broken, but not because there are no males in this species and females have not used them to breed. There are other creatures that are just like that, after all. The problem is that as the mating season arrives, females begin acting more like men. They couldn't fertilize anyone, of course, so one female would crawl up top another and sit there instead. It appears that hormones, which cause females to activate something like ancestral memory, are to blame. They thus begin to behave like other animals that still have males. However, according to a different idea, such conduct serves to activate particular hormones and improve the reproductive process. It's simply like, I'll pretend to be a man today and have children for you, and then we'll swap. I must admit, though, I don't really understand this plan. The common potu is my favourite species of bird on Earth, because, well, you get what I mean if you've seen at least one shot of this bird. They make fantastic fodder for memes. Potus frequently sit still during the day, seeming to be dry branches. They even maintain a high crest and their plumage aids in their camouflage. Consequently, you won't often see this bird during the day. Since the common potu is wonderfully suited for hunting flying insects, you'll have to wait till night to view the bird in all its magnificence. Their enormous mouth and keen eyes enable them to swoop down for the trees and nab the most delicious critters that don't flee in time. And these eyes? They are night vision devices for sure, but they are also disturbing to insects. I mean, take a look at this bird's dilated pupils. Really though, I really adore them. The plant known as Penthus bocarensis, which is regarded as carnivorous, may be found in Cambodia. It normally behaves like certain other plants that occasionally consume insects. People are excited when they see pictures that resemble particular organs, but the local authorities don't appreciate it. 
Because the species is vulnerable, taking nice selfies with the plucked Penthus bocarensis doesn't help. These plants may move away from people if they have the ability to do so. Yes, wild oats can actually do that. A wild oat seed has thin, long bristles that resemble hairs if you look at it closely. They are referred to as horns and respond to moisture. A wild oat seed will move if a drop of water is placed close to it. It'll literally walk. This is how wild oats have expanded their range. You'll undoubtedly come across a crack or depression as you travel across the ground surface where you may begin to develop. Because of this, wild oats spread like a weed. They're relocating in pursuit of a better existence, whereas the other plants remain still and quiet in one place. Okay, although the development of wild oats may be considered a blessing, proboscis monkeys weren't that fortunate. It's strange that this dubious gift from nature, like fiddler crabs, is utilized to entice females. Even if everyone has a different definition of beauty, come on, enough with the monkey noses. The primate's nose is a good indicator of its size and the efficiency of its reproductive system. Additionally, bigger noses alter the male's mating calls, which only enhances the male's allure. The possibility that the possessor of a big nose has a large female harem increases with nose size. Living in bachelor groups are the proboscis monkeys that were not fortunate enough to inherit a large nose. From a human perspective, this is obviously completely ludicrous. Females find a primate more alluring the more ugly it is. It cannot possibly make sense. However, this is not where nature has ended. The small teeth of the proboscis monkey match their large nostrils. Males' huge noses may prevent them from using fangs, making them less efficient as a weapon. Longer fangs also make eating a challenge. Proboscis monkeys do consume plants and fruit, after all. That is, you may have good food and be well-liked by women, but you can't fight back. Nature, are you certain that's a good thing? I sincerely doubt that having a large nose would be advantageous for a primate. It might be preferable to have no nose at all. Snub-nosed monkeys can survive without it, after all. They lack a nose and instead of some sort of facial slits, as if a botched rhinoplasty was the cause. One idea holds that snub-nosed monkeys lost their noses when they started to dwell in extremely cold environments. The unfortunate primates would just freeze them off if they retained the noses. To be honest, I'm not sure they have no difficulties because they have no nose. Consider the snub-nosed monkey from Myanmar as an example. Only locals who revealed a secret with scientists allowed for its discovery and description in 2011. These monkeys are easy to locate. Simply wait till it starts to rain. You might question what the weather has to do with it. Take a peek at these primates' nostrils. When it rains, the animals sneeze loudly due to how tilted they are. Well, if rains continued getting in your nose, you'd also start sneezing. The monkeys sit with their heads between their knees on rainy days, according to local hunters, to prevent water from getting into them. So perhaps having a large nose like a proboscis monkey is preferable. But that's still manageable. You know, it can get weirder when we see a black and white snub-nosed monkey in breeding times. Here, the idea of beauty is more like an odd joke. The fact is that as male snub-nosed monkeys age, their lips get red and become especially dazzling when it's time to seduce women. Monkeys with red lips and no nose? That's fantastic. But what about this? Although this monkey may not be the prettiest ever, as long as it doesn't produce any horcruxes, everything should be great. You just caught a fish, and it's clear that you're really happy about it. The fish immediately grins back at you as you grin widely. Sheep's head fish are the sponsor of my dreams. I wonder what was going on that this fish got these horrifyingly human-like teeth. I'm not sure. Sheep's head fish use their teeth to grind their food, much like humans do. Typically, these are all different sorts of crustaceans and mollusks, or creatures with hard shells that must be cracked. Thus, sheep's head fish act in such a manner. Additionally, their nutrition and habitat have an impact on how strong their teeth are. Did your parents advise you to drink extra milk as a child to maintain the strength of your teeth? Similar circumstances apply to sheep's head fish, except that they don't require dairy food to have a Hollywood grin. They just require a habitat abundant in shells to survive. A prime example of nature's extremely peculiar sense of humor is the Hugo Crepona tree. This tree truly does exist, and it is a palm tree at that. The Crepona tree was discovered in South America around 150 years ago. They discovered that it could be good for your health. You can't overlook the fact that it resembles a shoddy Christmas tree, after all. I couldn't think of a reason why nature would produce anything like this other than to see how people would respond. However, this plant is by no means the only one with, shall we say, an intriguing form. 
Typically, we believe that all turtles have a hard, protective shell around them. After all, along with Pizza and a sensei rat, this is their defining characteristic. However, just when things begin to appear straightforward and logical, nature provides us with the soft-shelled turtle. Its exterior really has a delicate, skin-like texture. In fact, it nearly seems as though the shell doesn't exist at all. Despite the fact that certain species of spines and bulges, they cannot be considered defensive mechanisms. So, it makes sense to ask, how can a turtle be a turtle if its shell doesn't protect it? It's easy. All you have to do is spend 95% of your life in the water, digging in the ground. The soft-shell turtle comes to the surface to breathe several times every day with only its eyes and mouth protruding. In other words, you're just lazing about like a slob on the bottom. Super speed is a fairly surprising perk of the ludicrous shell, though. Some scientists believe that the soft-shell turtles had to adjust and so they developed the ability to swim swiftly and even maneuver when necessary underwater. Would the regular shell make life simpler for this species? We don't know. Nature would have to answer that. See you later.